We all know investing our money in gold and silver is the right decision, but why do so many people choose silver, aka poor man's gold? What is it about silver? Is it the way the light hits and reflects off the metal? Do people prefer silver because of its utility and industrial applications? Do they choose it because it's so rare and we're allegedly running out of supply? Because it's supposed to go parabolic in price? Well, then it must be because of its historic performance over gold. How about silver is a tier one asset? Hmm. Because silver is a better inflation hedge, preserver of wealth, and is less volatile and cumbersome than gold? Well, why in the world do so many people choose silver over gold? So where are you going with this, Dr. Stacker? Well, I don't know if you needed to react that way, but I'll continue anyway. As I say, if knowledge was all that we needed, we already have everything we want out of life. A lack of information or knowledge is not our challenge as investors because it's everywhere. Heck, most of us carry a mini computer around in our pockets all day long. In reality, unfortunately, the biggest barrier and problem in investing is you, me, we, us. And as the saying goes, I can show you better than I can tell you. So let me show you. I have two simple questions I'm gonna ask you. All you have to do is come up with the answer and remember the answer because we'll be coming back to it. First question, a bat and a ball cost $110 in total. The bat costs $100 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Write down your answer or make a mental note. If it takes five machines, five minutes to make five widgets, how long would it take 100 machines to make 100 widgets? Remember or write down your answer. Or if you're really bold and confident, you'll pause the video right now, write your answer down in the comments section, and uh, we'll come back and see who was really confident and bold in their answers. How many of you figured out that in the first question, the ball costs $10? Remember the second question? How many of you figured out that 100 machines would, would make 100 widgets in 100 minutes? Perfect, perfect, perfect. You got those questions perfectly wrong and thereby proving a key point. A major part of our human nature is that we are hardwired to react, to use our instincts and to trust them. In behavioral investing and finance, you all already know how much I love and follow and believe in this approach. These little tests are used to help investors determine and understand how likely they are to make investing mistakes. James Mortier, one of the main theorists, talks about us having an X system where ideas are processed first our instincts drive our thinking and, and, and a desire to be fast. It's also where we're most likely to take mental shortcuts and experience the impact of our own personal biases. The other system is our logic system, where information is processed very differently and at a different speed. Both of those questions hopefully start to show how easily it is for us to get tripped up by trusting our instincts, be it a simple brain teaser or an investment decision. But when it comes to investing decisions in particular that are made based off of feelings, those can quickly derail your plans. One of our greatest challenges is that very often our X system is first to make a determination and it does so at a pretty good success rate, which then lulls us into this pattern where we start to trust our X system to the point that we don't even engage our logic system. Over and over again, we will make decisions based on what feels right rather than facts like determining that the baseball was $10. Now I know, since I told you you were wrong, some of you haven't heard a word I said because you've been trying to figure out how you got that question wrong. So rewind the video a few seconds and listen to what I just said. Now I'm gonna break down the answer for you. We all know that together the bat and the ball cost $110. We also know that the bat is $100 more than the ball. The X system in this haste says, $100 plus $10 equals 110, so the ball must be $10. However, when we add it up, $10 for the ball and the bat being $100 more than the ball means the bat is then $110, which then equals $120, and that's not the right answer. But if we pause, we realize that if the ball is $5 and the bat is $100 more, then the bat is $105 which does add up to $110. Do you see what your X system just did to you? Obviously you didn't click on this video to be tormented by brain teasers, even though I want to stretch your brain with every video. Hold tight, I promise we'll come back to the widget question shortly. Now think back to our last video, Don't Give Up on Silver. We talked about how our perspective determines our perception. 
I also made what I believe was a compelling case for silver in the long term, but not the short term. I also gave you 10 reasons why many investors have ended up with unreasonable expectations of and for silver. So I want to continue to build on that concept of perspective and perception because I believe it has a tremendous impact on why so many people choose silver over gold. Remember how I started this video. I asked you a series of questions about the allure of silver, and then I hit you with facts related to gold being a better investment. If that is the case, then why do so many of us have far more silver than gold in terms of invested dollars? Why is Wall Street silver bigger and more influential than the other gold forums put together? Yep, you got it. It's you again. Instead of picking on you though, I'm gonna pick on me today. For years, I bought silver over gold. I mean, almost exclusively, until I realized why. I always knew gold was the better investment, the metal I ultimately wanted to be in, but I kept buying silver. Looking back, I realized that no matter how I try to rationalize it or dress it up, my excuses really fell into one of three categories and sometimes multiple categories. One, I believed my lying eyes. Two, I let the wrong voices into my head and most importantly, three, I thought small, particularly in how I saw myself. Let me explain. And actually, before I explain, I really need you to hit the like button because if you truly like this content and are getting value from it and believe it's worth supporting, please hit the like button. It may not seem like a big deal, but it is a big deal to me as I continue to battle the trolls. With the last video, they were able to drive the like percentage down to the mid 90s. So if this truly is good content, please hit the like button for me to show support and hopefully we can drive them away once and for all. Don't think about someone else is going to do it. I want you to be the one to do it. Thank you. Where was I anyway? Oh, my lying eyes told me that silver was more affordable because it was so much cheaper per ounce. I thought that getting more ounces of silver was better for some reason. In reality, it's like buying a sirloin steak versus a filet mignon. Both are delicious and both have their place and value. But I could spend $16 and get a 6 ounce filet, or I could spend $16 and get a 12 ounce sirloin. Same amount of money, but most of us would choose a sirloin because of my second point, which is volume or value. No, not that type of volume. Ugh, we were doing so well. Anyway, too often we choose volume over value or cheap over expensive. I think that this is probably the biggest challenge for people as it was for me. I can't tell you how many times I didn't buy a 10th ounce of gold because psychologically 10 ounces of silver felt like a better deal. It's the sirloin versus the filet issue. I mean, I could get half a tube or I could get a decent sized 10 ounce bar versus a piece of gold the size of my thumbnail. Then there was the issue of three, affordability. I thought I couldn't afford gold, but I'd buy 10 ounce bars all day long which was basically the same price as a 10 ounce, a 10th ounce of gold. And a kilo? Well, that's all that's equivalent to a quarter ounce of gold. But the volume or the value thing showed its ugly head again. I could get this big old kilo bar that looks so nice in my safe and it takes up so much space, or I can get this teeny tiny quarter ounce of gold that I can keep in a matchbox. If you can buy 10 ounces of silver at a time, you can buy gold. But then there was this other issue of premiums. And I used to look at a $30 premium on a 10th ounce and think I was throwing so much money away, but somehow I'd gladly pay three or $4 an ounce for a silver coin, which is 30 or $40 if you spread it out over 10 ounces. Because number four, I was thinking small. Take a look at these prices I pulled from a new online dealer, Pimbex. While they aren't sponsoring this video or the channel, they are the new kid on the block and they seem to be punching the online bullies in the face with their pricing. I suggest that you check them out. I think it's worth it. I found that most of their prices were within a few dollars of the lowest prices I found on finebullions.com. At any rate, you can see here, this 10th ounce has a premium of 18%, which is $30 over melt. Remember, melt is just a shortcut way of saying the gold value by weight. Whereas the 10 ounce bar is $3.25 over spot or $32, which is an 18% premium. So why couldn't I buy gold? Because it was such a small piece of gold and it didn't really feel like I had bought something significant. Or was it because I just wasn't thinking big? Five, the voices I let into my head convinced me 
that silver was going to be a better investment, that it was going to be the investment of a lifetime. And instead of looking at the lifetime performance of silver versus gold, I just believed it. Before you start adding me in the comments, this isn't about whether gold is better, and I don't mean to send that message. What I'm trying to highlight is how my X system told me silver was a better investment, but now my logic system comes to a very different conclusion. Your logic system might conclude that silver is better, and that's fine. My job is to make sure you don't fall victim to the X system like I did, because I'd easily own half the silver that I do now and have more in gold, but my X system and my mentality led me to believe something very different. That's why I've taken you on this journey, because if it takes five machines, five minutes to make five widgets, it still only takes five minutes for 100 machines to make 100 widgets. That's the answer to your previous question. What researchers have found is that we have this disconnect between knowing the right thing to do versus us actually doing it. And this stems from our human biases and our perceptions. And thanks to the last two videos, we now understand that our perception is very much influenced by our perspective. What we end up with is a variety of biases and assumptions, perspectives, and perceptions that are highly influenced by our X system. And if we're not careful, it will drive decision-making over our logic system. Are you ready for a secret? This is why I spend so much of our time and content discussing emotions and topics that don't always seem related to stacking. It's why most of my videos start with stories because we need time to turn down or even modulate our X system so that I can get to your logic system. It's why I always say you as the investor is more important than the investment. This is why Stackers University is so unique. It's why I tell you it's not about a lack of information or knowledge. It's about you, your temperament, your emotions. As some of you know, I also have a master's in counseling. So let me tell you one other secret. The X system doesn't just play itself out in investing. It's a key to life. Learn to control your X system with your loved ones and watch your relationships flourish. Learn how to avoid the assumptions and biases that come with your X system and watch how much easier it is to communicate your needs, wants, desires, fears. Learn to control your X system and watch how much easier it is to receive critiques and negative feedback. Control your X system and see how much easier it is to attend to your partner and hear their needs. Control the X system and unlock a very different world, be it investing, life, or loved ones. I know we're a stagging channel, but in the comments, I want you to feel free to comment on this X system. What are your thoughts? Where does your X system create challenges for you? Is it in the area of managing emotions, jumping to conclusions, fear, doubt, etc.? How have you learned to control your X system? For those who want to stick with stacking, here's a few questions for you. How has the X system made you believe investing in gold was too expensive or not possible? How has the X system influenced your investing? Or you can simply write, what's up, doc? I hope this video helps you not just with investing, but in all aspects of your life. I want you to be wealthy and I want you to preserve your wealth, but I also want you to have a life that is full and rich, rich with love, happiness, and great experiences. I hope you are a better person for watching this video. If nothing else, you're my A students for getting this far and hearing those last few sentences. Always stack smarter and never stop learning.